Okay, so Dr. Holbert, a senior neonatologist, nailed it, was called to attend a patient he knew very well, Mrs. Gage, during the birth of her first child. She was at the hospital with her husband and was about to deliver the child who had been prenatally diagnosed with a number of severe deformities, including a congenital diaphragmatic hernia and severe cardiac anomalies. Excuse me. Dr. Holbert had had a number of frank conversations with Mrs. Gage and her husband and informed them of their child's anomalies, informed them that their child's anomalies were very severe and possibly life-threatening. Despite this, she and her husband uniformly insisted that a full and aggressive resuscitation be undertaken. At the end of their most recent discussion, Mrs. Gage agreed to let the team make their initial assessment at the time of delivery and discuss with her and her husband how to proceed at that time. Dr. Holbert felt this was a reasonable plan. With his resuscitation team in place, Dr. Holbert received the newborn baby boy who had a weak pulse and was making labored respiratory efforts. Upon reaching the infant warmer to assess the child, Dr. Holbert realized that the anomalies were more severe than initially expected. And though they might be able to keep him alive temporarily on maximal support, he would most likely never leave the ICU. Y'all following this? When Dr. Holbert reported to Mr. and Mrs. Gage on their son's condition and his prognosis, they said, We want you to do everything. Please don't let our son die. Trying to balance the good of the child and the emotional needs of the parents, Dr. Holbert turned to his team and quietly instructed them to undertake a slow code. Now, what's a slow code, you ask? Many medical students, residents, and other medical staff learn the elements of a slow code early in their clinical years. It seems to be part of the wisdom that some experienced physicians pass on following a long history known among the medical profession, but not generally known to the public. The intentions behind a call for a slow code are good. Primarily, it is a way to spare parents the full, painful acknowledgement of the extent of their child's deficits and the likelihood of his extremely poor quality of life or death. More importantly, it shields parents from having to make the painful decision to let their child die by choosing not to resuscitate or to stop treatment. It also protects the infant from the rigors of aggressive treatments that is likely to be unsuccessful. It must be acknowledged that calling a slow code also spares the physician the helpless feeling of doing nothing, having to face parents with empty hands. However good the intentions, though, calling a slow code raises significant ethical questions about deceit, paternalism, patient-doctor relationships, and teaching good communication skills. Oh, does it raise questions about that? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, what is a slow code? Well, what's a full code? Or code blue? Anybody? Anyone participated in a full code before? Uh, involves calling a rapid response team and initiating appropriate treatment as quickly and effectively as possible with the goal of a reversing an adverse event, returning patients to the status they had before the event that triggered the full code, and restoring as high a level of functioning as possible. It is an emergency intervention with high priority and speed is often critically important. A full code, properly executed, is often life-saving. A slow code, by contrast, Involves initiating some resuscitative measures, but carrying them out slowly or emitting the most aggressive. Interventions in slow code are limited in number, duration, intensity, or all three. For example, giving gentle chest compressions that do not crack the ribs. Slow also refers to the reduced alacrity with which staff responds to the call. The implicit hope is that the patient will die of his condition before they arrive. So, is the situation clear? Mr. and Mrs. Gage have a child, severe deformities. Physicians are very certain the child will never leave the ICU. Parents, obviously, want them to do everything possible, right? Everything you can. What should the physicians do? 
What are the conflicting values? Do we support the use of a slow code in this situation or not? What's going on here? Yeah? People feel good about it? All right, a couple minutes. Three, two, one. <laughs>